Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about unsafe math optimizations and how they can affect vectorization. So as we've seen in previous videos, there are a number of different optimization options that we can set with our compilers. Now, many of these options get turned on uh, by default at different optimization levels. So things like 01, 02, and 03. Now, there are certain options that are not turned on by default at any optimization level. And an example of this is our unsafe math optimizations. And these optimizations can affect how our code gets vectorized when it comes to our floating point arithmetic. So to understand this better, I have the GCC reference page for our optimization options up. And you can see there are a number of optimization options related to math, right? So we have these, you know, at dash F fast math, this dash F uh, unsafe math optimizations, dash F associative math, um, and so on and so forth. But what exactly do these things do and how could they possibly affect vectorization? So here, right, well, we're going to be taking a look at this dash F unsafe math optimizations. And if we read the description, it says that turning on this flag will allow optimizations for floating point arithmetic that assumes a couple things, right? One, it assumes that arguments and results are valid. And two, right, or B, it assumes that uh, these things may violate IEEE or ANSI standards. And if we go ahead and take a look um, you know, further down, it says that this option is not turned on at any dash O option level since it can result in incorrect output for programs that depend on an exact implementation of IEEE or ISO rules slash specifications for math functions here. So these are things that can improve the speed of our code here, but they can break some assumptions about um, how we're getting those results here. So you know, it may make our code less portable from machine to machine. We might get different results on different machines because we're no longer following, say, um, these same I IEEE or ISO rules and specifications. So let's go ahead and see a couple of examples of this. So we're going to look at it from a perf perspective and then from a numerics perspective. So starting off, let's go into this perf directory here. And I have a couple of pre-computed or, or rather pre-compiled executables here. So we're going to have a baseline, an unsafe version, and a tuned version. Now we've seen our baseline in our tuned version before. Our baseline version here, we're talking about dot products. Our baseline version is just going to be our auto vectorized uh, version of a dot product that we get with std transform reduce with the unsequenced execution policy. And our tune version is just going to be um, our dot product that uses that dot product simd intrinsic that we looked at in the last video. But we'll go ahead and you know not disclose what this unsafe version is just yet. So let's go ahead and first compare the performance of these three implementations here. And we're going to be benchmarking this with Google Benchmark, just like in the last couple of videos. So first, let's go ahead and run this baseline implementation here. And what we see is that it takes around you know 28.8 microseconds. So let's go ahead and also run our unsafe implementation here. So this one unsafe. And we see that it's a whole heck of a lot faster here, right? Somewhere between eight and nine times faster. So 3.76 microseconds. And then we can go ahead and run, you know, two tuned here, right? This is our Cindy intrinsic version. And it takes, you know, around 6.3 microseconds. So both our unsafe version and our uh, uh, tuned version with the Cindy intrinsic are, you know, a whole heck of a lot faster than our baseline auto vectorized version. But even our unsafe version is faster than our tuned Cindy intrinsic version. So what exactly is the difference between these three implementations here? Or rather, what makes this unsafe version so special? So let's go ahead and compare the source code for um, these different implementations. And specifically, let's compare our baseline and our unsafe version. So if I go ahead and do diff on zero baseline.cpp and one unsafe.cpp, we see that they're identical. There's no difference between these two pieces of code. The only difference between these two is that I enabled this dash F unsafe math optimizations for unsafe.cpp when I compiled it. And I didn't for baseline.cpp. If we go ahead and open up uh, the source code, we see that it is just our baseline code here. We set up our random number generator. We're working on two to the 15 elements still, and we're just calling std transform reduce with this std execution unsequenced um, execution policy here. There's no difference between that and our baseline.cpp code, just this compiler flag. 
Okay, so now that we know that there's no difference in the actual source code, let's look at the underlying assembly that changed when we added this flag. So to do that, we can do perf record on zero baseline first, and then perf report to look at the assembly. And let's go ahead and look at this tight loop that is our dot product. So the first thing that happens, just like we saw in previous videos, is we load in you know eight values or 256 bits into one of these 256-bit YMM registers. Then we do a vector multiplication here with eight values in this register with other eight values that we're loading from memory here. Then we have all of our adds that are you know summing up those partial results here. So that's what all these um, add instructions are doing. And we just do that in a loop over and over until we run out of elements. So that's going to be our baseline auto vectorized implementation here. So let's go ahead and see how this differs from our auto vectorized implementation, where we've also added this unsafe math optimizations flag. So we'll do perf record again, uh, but this time with one unsafe, and then perf report. So what we see is a very tight inner loop here. And we see a new instruction, this vf uh, m add 231 ps here. So all this instruction is, is a single precision, so precision single, this ps, vector fused multiply and add operation here. So this is what's doing our multiplies and adds for us, all in a single instruction here. But why exactly didn't our compiler just choose this from the start? So to understand that more, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, development reference guide from Intel here. And specifically, we're looking at this intrinsic, this MMF multiply and add precision single for 256 bits. So if we look at the description, it says, performs a set of SIMD multiply and add computation on packed single precision floating point values using three source vectors slash operands A, B, and C. Corresponding values in the two operands A and B, so those are values coming from our vectors V1 and V2, are multiplied and the infinite precision intermediate results are added uh, to corresponding values in the third operand, after which the final results are rounded to the nearest float 32 values. So why exactly was this only turned on with um, you know, unsafe math? Well, it has to do with this infinite precision uh, intermediate results here. So if we go ahead and go back to our optimization flag options, it said that um, you know, this option is not turned on by default uh, because it can result in incorrect output for programs that depend on the exact implementation of IEEE or ISO rules and specifications for math functions. So in this case, what exactly are we doing inside of our high-level source code? Well, we're doing things like multiplies and adds for single precision numbers here. But if we go ahead and take a look at our um, intrinsic here um, and the description of this instruction, it's talking about these infinite precision intermediate results here. So we're no longer doing 32-bit arithmetic at this point here. So we might wind up with a different result compared to just doing that 32-bit arithmetic. In fact, we're pretty likely to wind up with a different result if we're using a different precision here. So some higher precision, or like it says here, this infinite precision. So that's why this uh, the compiler doesn't choose this uh, optimization without turning on unsafe math optimizations. It's going to give us a different result probably compared to just doing normal 32-bit single precision arithmetic. Okay, so that's looking at it from a performance perspective and why the compiler might not have vectorized the code, right, to get this high, higher performance version. Let's go ahead and take a look at it from a results perspective. So what does our final result look like by comparison um, with our three different versions here? So for that, we'll go ahead and go out of here and we'll go into this numerics directory. So in this case, we have the exact same three implementations um, of our you know, dot products here. So two with our transform reduce that will compile with and without unsafe math optimizations. Um, in this case, we're going to fix the uh, random seed or the seed here for a random number generator. So we get the exact same random numbers uh, generated as inputs to these three different examples here. So to the 20 uh, random numbers between zero and one that we're doing a dot product on inside of our two vectors. Um, so the exact same code for unsafe.cpp and with our tune.cpp, um, it's slightly different because we have this hand vectorized version, but we're still generating the exact same inputs here with the exact same seed to a random number generator. 
Um, so all of these have the exact same input. So let's go ahead and compare um, the final result of these three dot products. So here we'll go ahead and compile um, our different examples here. So we'll start with um, our uh, example zero here, this baseline, and we'll compile it with our flags 03, march is equal to native, and std is equal to c20. Then we'll compile this unsafe.cpp with the same flags, except we'll also add this dash f unsafe math optimizations. And then finally, we'll compile our two tune.cpp. And in this case, same as the first time, just 03, march is equal to native, and std is equal to c20. And let's see the results between these three. So we'll compile uh, or run this zero baseline. And you see we get this, you know, 262293 result. If we run one unsafe, you see we get a different result here, 262330. And we actually get the same result with our hand tuned uh, vector dot product example. So we get this 262330. So we get different results when we enable these, uh, you know, unsafe uh, math optimizations here. So in this case, it used that uh, fused multiplying add that had those infinite precision intermediate values. We got the same result using that manual SIMD intrinsic that um, our compiler didn't use. And then, um, you know, we got a you know different result here, right, compared to our um, baseline, right, which is just our normal auto vectorized example here. So we're unsafe in our tuned version got the same example. Uh, or same result, uh, but it differs from our baseline that's obeying all of our normal IEEE and ISO rules here. So this is exactly why these kinds of optimizations may not be turned on by default. It can give us different results here. And it's up to us to decide whether or not that's a good thing and we're getting better results, say, with these intrinsics. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. It's a brief introduction to these unsafe math optimizations and how they can affect both performance um, and numerics here. Now, you know, just because it says unsafe doesn't necessarily mean it's worse, right? We could get better results, right? Because we're using these infinite precision intermediate values uh, compared to just normal 32-bit arithmetic. But the key point there is that it's different than the ISO or IEEE standards. Okay. Now, another thing I'd point out, um, and along with linking these two things below the video, right, our instruction and these optimization options, a great read is this what every computer scientist should know about floating point arithmetic. And it really details why compilers do things in a certain way and why things like floating point arithmetic is not associative. So I'll link that below the video as well. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.